Welcome to the final day of Uzbet 2023. How are you? I hope everybody is still with us and feeling well. To kickstart our final day, I would like to invite our second keynote speaker, Dr. Dilawati Adwahab from Center for Knowledge and Understanding of Tropical Architecture and Interior, aka Kutai, to deliver her speech. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh and salam sejahtera. Uh, thank you to our moderator and all uh, to all the participants of undergraduate seminar Sustainable Built Environment or USPET 2023. Okay. I am Lilawati binti Abdul Wahab, okay. representing Center for Knowledge and Understanding of Tropical Architecture and Interior or well known as Putai from UITM Perak branch. Okay. So today I would like to share on my topics which is conservation of heritage building in Malaysia. So what is conservation? Actually, heritage building conservation is a process to preserve the heritage building to its original state in order to protect the history and cultural life of the building. Okay. Conservation is the action taken to prevent decay and manage change dynamically. It embraces all acts that prolong the life of our cultural and natural heritage. The basis of heritage building conservation is established by legislation through listing and scheduling buildings, through regular inspections and documentations, and town planning and conservative action, which is by Felden 2003. Okay. Conservation of heritage building has been done quite a long time ago in Europe. Uh, example of some popular heritage buildings that have been conserved is Pantheon in Rome, Italy, St. Mark's Basilica Cathedral in Venice, Italy, Colosseum Amphitheatre in Rome, Italy, Taj Mahal in Agra, India, and Kutub uh, Minar in New Delhi, India. In the local context, Malaysia too has uh, some popular conservation buildings. Some conservation buildings or monuments in Malaysia are the city of a famous in Malacca, uh, Bangunan Sultan Abdul Samad in Kuala Lumpur, Istana Seri Menanti in Negeri Sembilan, and Cadiz Castle in Batu Gajah, Perak. According to Hamilton and Mat Ali, in the 1980s, efforts to preserve the heritage buildings began to take place seriously. But the awareness of preserving the heritage of the country begins with the meeting of ancient objects found across the country. Heritage building is building constructed by an earlier generation with unique and admirable features. Uh, as Brand claimed that heritage building structure should last 80 to 100 years. The envelope or skin typically lasts for 60 years or more. Building services last for 20 to 30 years and the interior fit should last 5 to 10 years. According to Jabatan Warisan Negara, the age of heritage building is more than 100 years. Phil then stated that if the building is capable to survive more than 100 years of age, the building is entitled to be gathered as a heritage building. A heritage building is a significant building that carries unique, distinctive features and is able to attract curiosity about its existence and history behind it. The heritage building is declared a heritage building by the local authority or competent authority. According to UNESCO, heritage building is included as one tangible heritage. Tangible means that things can be seen and touched physically. Tangible heritage refer to physical buildings and historic places, monuments, artifacts, etc., which are considered worthy of preservation for the future generation. National Heritage Act 2005 defined heritage as any heritage site, heritage object, underwater cultural heritage, or any living person declared as national heritage under Section 67. Most of the style of heritage building available in Malaysia have influence from Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. This building embraces multicultural architecture heritage with strong Islamic, Chinese and Western influences practiced from ancient times until today. For criteria of heritage building can be identified based on several key criteria. The criteria is historical, architectural, placement, cultural and technology development. Uh, as historical, heritage buildings in Kuala Lumpur, Melaka and Penang have a colonial influence on design. According to Ahmad, 
the colonialists and traders who came to Malaya brought together the culture and the arts from their home country, which affected the architect of the building in Malaya. The heritage buildings with historical significance show that this can be proof of an era of historical event. Uh, as a criteria for architectural, most of the heritage buildings have architectural design with a variety of influences. Additionally, the architectural design of a heritage building can also explain the origin of the heritage building and its history. For the placement criteria, the building, the heritage building is among the important buildings that affect the shape of the heritage city. It is also an important element in providing the appearance and character of a city or place, especially for a heritage city that has been recognized as a World Heritage Site. For the culture care criteria, it should directly or indirectly a heritage buildings supposedly display the characteristic and ways of living in a place, traditional activities, and social cultural practice. Heritage buildings should also have a connection with the tradition and social culture of the local community practice from ancient times until today. And the last criteria for heritage buildings is technology development. Heritage buildings often have features that are unique in construction technology. It is difficult to find a suitable technology for the heritage building today. Most of these heritage buildings exhibit fineness and craftsmanship that require high skill in restoring or preserving building in terms of manufacturing and construction. Building material use also have varieties and privilege in terms of durability which are often able to survive for hundreds of years. Based on uh, Jabatan Warisan Negara, they have categorized the heritage building into 12 categories, which is residential, commercial, military, educational, institutional, industrial, agricultural, religious, recreational, social and culture, transportation, and other types of building. So according to Ahmad, heritage building can be classified and listed into three categories of building. These grades are divided based on the importance of heritage building based on the national heritage. This category indirectly facilitates the parties involved in the conservation of heritage building to perform the conservation works based on the grid provided. For the grade one, most of the heritage building for the grade one is building of architectural excellence and historical importance. The building has to preserve for the purpose of national interest. As an example, the Kuala Lumpur Railway Station, Sultan Abdul Samad Building, Jamit Mosque and State House Building in Melaka. And for the Grade 2 is the Heritage Building which is building which has historical interest and give a certain value to the state is located. For example, the Johor Royal Museum and Penang City Hall Building. And the four Grade 3 buildings is Heritage Building which have a special architectural or historical character which may have a good effect on life. Such a building which have either religious, cultural, or social interests or an uh, example of a particular culture and craftsmanship. Actually, the heritage building has their own importance. Heritage buildings have characteristics that are remarkable and unique. They are categorized as a limited resources of architectural her heritage. Heritage building also provide a sense of identity and continuity in today's fast-changing world. For conservation of heritage building, there are parties or agency which is related to conservation works. For international agency or parties which is actively involved in heritage building conservation is UNESCO. One of them is UNESCO or United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. Besides that, we have ICOMOS from Australia, which is International Council on Monument and Sites. And we ha also have uh, International Centre for the Study of Preservation and Restoration of Cultural Her Heritage, ICROM. 
for the Malaysian agency or parties uh, who is actively involved in heritage building conservation, we have Jabatan Warisan Negara or Malaysian National Heritage Department, which is uh, seriously uh, involved uh, in conserve all our heritage buildings. Uh, we also have non-governmental organisation or NGO such as Malaysian Heritage Agency or Badan Warisan Malaysia. Uh, we also have Pinin Heritage Trust in Pinin, Perak Heritage Society and Melaka World Heritage Sendirian Berhad. So actually there are uh, a lot of importance in conserve, uh, conserving uh, our heritage buildings. Uh, our heritage buildings have architecture, uh, architecture characteristics that are remarkable and unique. It also categorized as a limited resource of historical records. Uh, it's depicted, it is important to maintain the authenticity of existing heritage resources from the past because they will form a reference for our future memory. Heritage building also plays an important role in defining the landmark within the urban area as well as generating income and boosting the tourism industry. It also uh, saved the uh, heritage building from uh, destroyed and, uh, and demo demolished. <coughs> uh, from conserving our heritage building, it also gave a new generation the opportunity to study the history of human life and the culture of the local community by conducting study on existing heritage buildings. In a uh, conservation uh, pro uh, process, there are uh, principles that must be abided by the conservator or the uh, parties involved in the conservation project, which is uh, according to Bura Charter, there are four major principles in conservation works, which are the need to retention or restoration of historical significance. Conservation process must be based on research, minimum physical intervention to the heritage building, and they must do a maintenance of visual surrounding for the heritage buildings. Uh, they also, uh, there are also four criteria of authenticity needs to be considered and practiced as outlined by International Center for the Study of the Preservation and Restoration of Cultural Property, ICROM, in 1998 in doing conservation work. The four criteria are originality of building material must be sustained, okay, must follow the original design of the building okay, and must follow the original work and manufacturing technique which is workmanship and we cannot change the originality in the layout or setting. There are uh, various methods that have been used in conservation works. According to Fielden, there are generally 10 common conservation works method for heritage building that have been used such as uh, preservation, restoration, rehabilitation, compatible use, prevention, maintenance, reproduction, reconstruction, consolidation, and adaptive reuse. For uh, our uh, Malaysia uh, uh, conservation uh, projects, the public actually has uh, started uh, to recognize the importance of preserving the country's all uh, historical significant uh, buildings uh, start from the 80s. Okay, so there are efforts to protect heritage building from destruction. Okay, and it made uh, on a larger and more extensive scale in many different ways with the support of many parties. Uh, in the care and conservation of heritage building process, understanding the nature of the building material is important. The need for a building research methodology is also important to ensure heritage building are well conserved. There are four uh, steps in a uh, heritage building conservation process. Okay, we've divided it to four phases. First is documentation. Second phase is building investigation or dilapidation survey. And third one is diagnosis. And the fourth one is uh, conservation and repair technique. Okay. So for, for the first phase is documentation. We divided it to two stages, which is historical research and fieldwork or major drawing. For historical research, uh, we had need to start before any conservation project started. It is important to have an original documentation about the buildings. The documentation needs are, we need original design drawing for the heritage building. And we also need drawing from previous investigation, if they are done the investigation before. 
and the third one we need a historical evidence such as old photograph old maps and old paintings of the building we also need the report from previous investigation or any historical report Okay, these documents will help the conservator for planning the actual works on the conservation. Okay. Second stage is fieldwork or measured drawing. So measured drawing or as found drawing means a set of line drawing that accurately and in some detail delines the subject buildings in the existing condition. The measured drawing will illustrate the interior and exterior of a building including the structure detail. It will also illustrate the defect areas such as crack in plaster and the missing elements. Okay, let's go to the second phase which is dilapidation survey and building investigation. So we have three stages in this phase which is visual survey, site test and laboratory test. Okay, according to Harun, a dilapidation survey is the practice of identifying and recording building defects through the means of photographic and digital documentation before any conservation works. In the practice of building conservation, dilapidation survey are generally instrumental to the following aspect. First, understanding the state of building defects. Secondly, determining the causes of the building defects. Thirdly, identifying appropriate methods and techniques for building conservation and lastly providing reference materials to clients consultants and project contractors okay for the uh, next phase is visual survey okay the process of the dilapidation survey is the process of walking through a building together and record information based on observation of the finished spaces and any exposed structure we also do site testing, which is an action to identify materials and their condition by using instruments. The site test is a non-destructive test, which is usually based on detection of the physical properties of the wall or exposed surface. Okay. Next, we also done a laboratory test, a test to identify the original material and the composition of materials. Examples of laboratory tests include a test to identify plant species, dispersion agents and chemical fungicides, timber species, grading and group strength, detect the salt levels and percentage of total iron, and to classify paint type as well as color scheme analysis for the buildings. Okay, for the phase three is diagnosis. Uh, there are four main objectives in doing uh, the diagnosis. First is to identify main causes of defects. So the conservator needs to find the, uh, the causes of the defects. Then they have to determine the location of the occurrence. Okay. The third one, they also have to determine the symptom of the defects. And lastly, is to suggest, suggest appropriate methods of conservation and repair techniques. Lastly, is phase four, conservation and repair techniques. There are a cleaning, consolidation, reconstruction, restoration, and preservation in this phase. Okay. So the conservator first will prepare the proposal or method of statement on technique to repair and conserve heritage building. Conservation work start with preliminary activity, such as cleaning the building surfaces. By doing this, the appearance of heritage building becomes clear and the conservation activities can be managed systematically. It will follow with consolidation, reconstruction, restoration and preservation activities. The building conservation process will start with the upper element. The process is from top to the bottom of the building. We know that conservation is related to, common, uh, to defects. There are common defects in heritage buildings that need to be solved by the conservator. Common defects in heritage buildings have been found in uh, such locations such as external wall, internal wall, upper floor, ground floor, staircase, roof, gutters and rainwater pipe. And the common types of defects that always have been uh, found in uh, doing conservation projects is cracking, damp, uh, surface disintegration, deterioration and discoloration in external wall. Besides that, uh, there are also cracking 
dam and patchy white deposits in internal wall. Uh, there are timber collapse, decay, warping and shrinking boards at upper floors. Okay. Uh, for the ground floors, uh, the common types of defect that they have found is curling and gaps between board, lifting and cracking screed and loss of floor and dam. And uh, for the staircase, uh, the common types that they found is collapse of staircase, timber decay and cracking. For the roof, the types of defects that are uh, uh, common uh, have been done is timber decay, spreading and sagging, slipping and spilling of sheeting, loose, missing and broken tiles. And for, uh, we also found uh, leaking in gutters uh, and in rainwater pipe. Uh, also, we found a block and perforated and bowing in rainwater pipe. So, from uh, the defects, actually, if we are not doing uh, conservation, uh, we will uh, find uh, that the heritage building will collapse and loss of use. And uh, to repair uh, the defect, it will uh, give us a high cost of repair and maintenance. Okay, so the factors that cause building defect in heritage buildings are climate conditions, location of buildings, building type and change of use, maintenance of building, and the fifth one is building age. So for climate condition, actually uh, our country, uh, as a tropical country, we has a heavy rainfall and warm sunshine all year round. So this building was exposed to external causes such as rain, wind, solar radiation, and atmospheric pollution. So, from this climate condition, okay, there are defects that will uh, occur is fungal stain, harmful growth, peeling pain, erosion of motor joints, and defective plastered rendering. So, the second factor is uh, location of buildings. Most of uh, our heritage buildings located near the sea or rivers, okay, which tend to have common building defects. Water coming from the ground causes dampness, penetration, and structural instability to the building. The third one is maintenance building. Historic buildings that neglect building maintenance may fall into several defects, which may lead to structural failures and loss of use. It is important to regularly inspect the main structural elements, including foundations, beams, and columns, and other building elements. Fourth one is building age. All elements of historic building tend to deteriorate at a lesser or greater rate depending upon their location and function. Old buildings often face problems with building materials. Proper treatment of building repair and maintenance should be given full consideration. Okay, that's all for today. I hope you will uh, enjoy my talk. Okay, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. Next, we have the privilege of hearing from the Head of Department of Built Environment and Technology, Professor Madia Technologist Dr. Nur Hafiza Abdul Rahman, who will be delivering the closing address. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests, distinguished speakers, and esteemed participants, we are honored to have a distinguished panel of people who have made important contributions to their respective discipline with us today. Please allow me to greet these wonderful people on behalf of the entire nation. I want to start by expressing our deepest appreciation and gratitude for their presence to Associate Professor Dr. Nur Hisham Ibrahim, Rector of UITM Perak, and Technology Surveyor Dr. Surya Ningah Abdul Wahab, Head of Program of Building Surveying. Our keynote speakers for the day are Dr. Asma Lachi Ahmad from GridSafe, and Surveyor Dr. Lilawati Abdul Wahab, a respective representative from knowledge of understanding and tropical architecture and interior, Kutai. And we want also to express our sincere gratitude to all of our outstanding visitors from being here. All of us gathered here today are inspired by your skill, knowledge and love for your individual disciplines. Welcome to the sixth undergraduate seminar on Built Environment and Technology. 
where we, we bright minds from all over the world have gathered to discuss the interesting intersection of technology, breakthrough in architecture and technological innovations. Today, we set off an amazing trip that honors the skill, creativity and goals of the young visionaries who are influencing the development of built environment. It is impossible to overestimate the significance of our collaborative efforts to build sustainable, effective and resilient structures in this uh, dynamic age of growing and ever-evolving technological advancement. The choices we made now we have a significant impact on the town and cities of the tomorrow and forum like this are uh, where we are, can stimulate discussion, share ideas and equip the upcoming generation of thought leaders in the built environment and technology. We will, as, we will examine a wide range of fascinating subjects at this seminar from the sustainable design principle and smart infrastructure to the incorporation of cutting edge technology and the investigation of novel materials as we investigate how these components interact to build the future top topographies of our globe, the power of knowledge and imaginative thinking will guide us. This conference offers a venue for the bright minds in attendance today. Our undergraduate attendees to, the demonstra to demonstrate their innovation, research results and cutting edge ideas. Use this chance to meet people who share your enthusiasm for changing the built environment and to share ideas, ask for advice and develop lasting relationships. I also want to express my sincere gratitude to the organizing committee, to the hardworking people who make this event possible. Your dedication to facilitating knowledge sharing and developing fresh talent is admirable. May this seminar serve as catalyst for invention, a transforming experience for all of us, and a demonstration of the tremendous power of group intelligence. As we begin the sixth undergraduate seminar on the built environment and technology, I wish all of you enlightened and thought-provoking journey. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Madia Technologist Dr. Nuhafiza Abdurrahman for an immaculate speech. And with that, we've come to the end of the sixth undergraduate seminar on Built Environment and Technology 2023. It has been an incredible journey of knowledge sharing, collaboration and inspiration. I would like to extend my deepest gratitude to all our distinguished speakers, participants, organizers and sponsors who made this event possible. Your contributions have been nothing short of remarkable. Remember, the pursuit of knowledge knows no bounds. Let's continue to build a better future through innovation and collaboration in the field of built environment and technology. Safe travels to all, and until we meet again, take care and stay inspired. To wrap up the event, please, Enjoy the winner announcement video. Thank you and have a pleasant day. Ten.